Kids and Cadets, welcome back to Tommy Time. I appreciate you coming out. This was a package deal, two for 30. I had already shown you this Crafty. This is a 2004 Crafty with the bag. We ended up starting this thing off with Happy Juice. I brought out the big guns. Gave it some motivation and it was quickly and easily started. So we know we need a carb clean here on the 2004. I had still had this, um, this um, Scots manufactured by John Deere. I had to show you this one. This is a 2000 model year and this one has been a pain in my dairy air. As the French would say, I can't say pain in the ass because they'll toss me out of the YouTube network for using vulgar and unprofessional language. If anything, at Tommy time, we must remain professional. So let's start at the beginning with this thing and I'll go down the list on why it was such a pain in the ass. So first things first, started looking at it and the uh, pull cord was um, loose and dangling. It would only pull over one revolution. This was all saggy. So I removed the plastics, removed the recoil, undid the rope, spun the um, recoil around or backtracked it, in other words, three or four revolutions to tighten up the spring, put the rope back in, tied a knot on the end of the rope, and now we have a, a taut recoil. It's nice and springy. So in the meantime, I had looked in the tank, nothing, but it smelled horrible. You get that rotten gas smell. I looked in the um, crankcase to check um, level and noticed the crankcase was full of gasoline. So I had poured that off into a, an old quart soda can. It was just the crankcase was filled, filled to the top. So I just threw some junk oil in here to test it. So either we had a stuck float or somebody didn't know what they were doing and they put gasoline in the crankcase. I think the float might have screwed up and it just kept filling the, the crankcase. <clears throat> So knowing we had a fuel problem, I um, went ahead and took the carb off, cleaned that. Figured since I had all that off, I'd change the primer bulb. It was starting to look a little bad. So we got a new red primer bulb. Wait, wait, it doesn't end there. When I had the um, plastic cover off, noticing the um, gas tank here, this is a prime example of what happens. I'm kind of glad I, I stumbled upon this one so I can show you kids and cadets how bad they can get. They had issues with these wrap around tanks. You can see all these hairline cracks from the gas. Um, just the plastic drying and then you'll have gasoline weeping out of these cracks. It did hold a little bit of gas, but you can see this crack here. So it didn't hold much. A lot of it was weeping out. You can see all the stress cracks here on the backside. This is just all soft and I mean, there's thousands of cracks up in this area. You can see all these cracks up here where the seam is right here. 
So needless to say, I threw another um, Chinese aftermarket tank on. I've been using these here in several projects. I think I have a couple left. I may have to order a few more, but they're about $24 on AliExpress, free shipping. I think actually I got two on the way. So these are going to get harder and harder to find. You're going to get units in and you're going to have the same issue as that other one. It's going to be all cracked. And you're not going to be able to use the, um, use the tank again on a project. Even if you get a dead unit in, you're trying to salvage the tank, you're going to have issues. Wait, wait, it's not over yet. We still have more pain in the ass issues to discuss. So I had cleaned the carb, as I mentioned. I didn't put back the um, primer bulb, all that plastics. I just bolted the carb to the intake. I gave it a shot of um, this big big can of carb cleaner hoping it would fire off and then I would continue on with the project so I got no no action another squirt no action so we had no spark I took the plug out was grounding it against the frame or the engine body here and nothing changed the plug still nothing So I says, huh, Tommy time, it's time to change out the coil. Before I did that, here's the uh, coil that came out of it. You can see all the rust. This, th this unit's been sitting forever. A lot of rust. I ended up cleaning up the um, coil a little bit. Put it back in. We still had no action on it went ahead and ch make sure the um, the wire here on the linkage was not grounding out and causing no no action on the the spark everything seemed to be fine on the linkage assembly found another use coil I had gotten this from a scrapper clean this one up put it put it on same thing no no spark so about this time i've had this thing the recoil off half a dozen times i could do it in my sleep so third time's a charm i grabbed a new new coil fresh out of the box put it on and we ended up with spark so that's where we are now uh, same plug is in here that came with it we got spark. I redid the carb. New tank. And I think I caught you up on everything that's been changed. But I kind of screwed up this video. Hold on. This is the uh, model number from John Deere. Or the product number the model number is this thd walk three speed this happens to be a three speed machine it has a date code fourth month of 2000 this is the briggs engine number it was produced 02 of 2000 so it took them two months to get it to the factory where they threw it on the the john deere 02 of 2000 for the engine, 04 for when the uh, date code for the whole unit. If you're looking for uh, date codes on these after you have the uh, this initial product number, the last digits here, 
will tell you the year. So it's a 2000 model year, the zero, zero. Second month, 22nd day of um, February of 2000. That's how they do their date codes. So let's throw some uh, gas in it. I hope this thing works. The other issue I noticed when I was pushing it around, the um, drive wheels, this is rear wheel drive, seemed kind of clankety. So I took the uh, wheels off. The wheels are actually yellow. So I think somebody's replaced the rear wheels. I think maybe originally they were gray. Something's off. I'm not sure what, but I think the yellow wheels in the back have better tread and it looked like they were in newer condition. So I think this was a gray unit um, originally. You can see these tires have less tread. So I greased up everything back there. It seems to um, roll a lot easier. If you want the product number and the bill date, it's here on the side of the unit. So let's fuel this. I'm hoping we have success. If not, I'll be really bummed out. Speaking of pain in the ass. This is one of those dogs that just kept, kept going and going. We got Amazon stopping out front. I ordered some parts. Hopefully they're coming to see me. I was kind of hoping for the parts yesterday, but today's another day. I don't see any leaking fuel. I should probably turn the fuel valve on. I think somebody may have put an aftermarket fuel valve there. So it's on, I don't see anything leaking. I say we proceed, proceed with caution. Safety first. So we're dead in the water. The, sp the spring must have an issue. It must have grabbed itself and let me spin it back three or four times, giving it a tug right now. Unsprung it. The issue with this, this uh, older style overhead valve is the recoil has a funny bump on it. The exhaust actually comes out of the top of the head and then goes out. So you can't use a standard uh, quantum style recoil on this. It's a, a different shape recoil here in the front. So I'm sorry this didn't um, turn out the way I wanted it to. This was a, a dead video. I had nothing to show you other than all the work I did to this machine.
so it just quit I don't know why I went to engage it I was able to get it going there just with uh, one spin at a time it would give one revolution and it was enough to kick it off so smoky here it didn't sound bad went to engage the transmission and it uh, quit out on me I think I should have enough fuel in it so I don't know what the deal is with this thing this is a problem So that junk oil I put in there is going to pick up all that uh, gasoline residue. And then when I change the oil, it's all going to come out at once. That's where we are. Got it started the second time with just that little bit of recoil action. I was able to engage the uh, rear wheel drive. But as you can see, the recoil is dead. So maybe I can try to rebuild the recoil order another spring for it so this didn't go as easy as I had hoped sounds like we have a, a fuel issue if it's running for a while then quitting it's uh, starving for fuel the um, float needle may be stuck it's just uh, letting enough fuel in to burn then it quits let it sit, the bowl fills up again and then starts and, and uh, same thing, repeating issue. Maybe I'll have better luck with the 04 675. I may jump over to that one just because I'm tired of working on this 2000 Scots. I've spent enough time on it. I got to have some success before the sun goes down. This 2004 might be a good candidate. It'll be a quick and easy carb clean. It fired off with happy juice initially. 
I don't see anything else, any other outstanding or blatant issues with this thing. Anyway, thanks for coming out. Appreciate you checking out this Scott's pain in my ass. I didn't anticipate a recoil issue was going to do a sin. I had figured maybe the carburetor, if I had not cleaned it well enough, we might not have got it to run with that carb, but the stupid recoil is what is uh, ailing us. Anywho, I did try the uh, three speed and it does seem to operate. There is three different speeds. When I moved the uh, hand selector into the different positions, it did seem to make the uh, wheels move a little slower or faster. Never really fond of these things. It's just another thing to break. The... Um, The, the uh, method I like is just a standard old grab bar up here, pull the bar, and it gauges the transmission. The stuff here is just uh, fancy. Fancy, and it's uh, problematic. It's just another cable that I got to buy. Or come down here, remove the uh, black plastic covering, and see why it's not moving anyway that's where we are again sorry for this no result video have a good day please tip your waitress and wait staff maybe they're having a better day than i am continue to like and subscribe i'll uh, i'll give you one more on this scotty we'll try to get this thing up and running. I've got to get something out of my $30 investment. One thing I wanted to mention that I didn't, durable 13 gauge steel. So this was back in 2000 when they made this. So that tells me the engineers and the marketing people we're going to a thinner, crappy steel deck. They had to highlight it here, let everyone know that they were still using quality steel at a reasonable price. It does appear to be quite quite durable and sturdy. I don't see any rust through. So 23 year old unit, there may be some truth to this durable 13 gauge steel. Anyway, continue to have a good day today. Again, sorry about the Scotty. We're going to make this deer run one more time.